Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Lance Knight. I am the Vice President General Manager for ConnectAll. And today with me, I have the Area VP of Emerging Technology for ORSI. And in today's changing world of tooling and the tooling explosion and the rebranding and changing from Visual Studio Online to uh, Azure DevOps, we thought it'd be good to have a presentation on how you can make all the tools uh, in your software delivery system communicate. And Joe and I are gonna go through a presentation of showing you how to set up and configure ConnectAll to communicate between the new Azure platform for DevOps and JIRA. So Joe, take us through it. All right. Well, thanks, Lance. I appreciate it. Um, as Lance said, my name is Joe Schultz. And what I'm going to show you today is a couple of things. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the blessing and curse of information. Uh, you know, we all live in a, in a information overload world. So we'll talk a little bit about how that works and how you can build an effective connected tool chain to solve those problems. And then I'm actually going to show you the Connect All product. We'll jump in and do a live demo and show you integration between the JIRA and Azure DevOps tools. So first, uh, you know, Lance and I have talked about this many times. <laughs> the world is um, uh, full of information. There's lots of uh, data that we collect as corporate organizations, and we track virtually everything from uh, inception of an idea through delivery of the product. And the problem is not really collecting that data. The problem is organizing and using that data effectively. Um, it, in short, it's building a process around that data that facilitates your productivity and your efficiency. And that's really what ConnectAll is all about, is helping you manage that information and put information in the hands of the people that need it in the place that they need to consume it. Now, in a corporate DevOps kind of world, um, that information usually exists in repositories. It's usually in application products. And so on the screen, for example, are just a, an example of a few very popular uh, repositories that we see in our customers today. So things like, uh, you know, ServiceNow for support tickets or escalation, um, CRM products like Salesforce, backlog management tools like Jira, quality assurance tools like Microfocus or uh, development tools like Azure DevOps. And as I said, these are just a smattering. I mean, these are uh, some of the big names that we hear a lot. But of course, every customer has their own set of repositories, their own set of tools, and their own process for connecting all of those. And the big challenge that most people have then is that that information exists in these little silos in kind of a sea of information. Um, and nobody has visibility to anyone else's uh, data. And so the people who are working in, say, Azure DevOps, trying to build software, don't necessarily know what's happening with the backlog prioritization that's happening over in Jira. So we end up scheduling lots of meetings or sending lots of emails or spending lots of time on chat message streams, you know, things like that in order to connect these silos of information. And so that's the problem that Connect All attacks directly. Um, what Connect All is, is a, a process enablement tool. Um, and Lance teases me sometimes because I use the word process enablement. Uh, what I mean by that is that we enable automation of the process um, across all these application tools. And so, for example, you know, I, I just mentioned Jira and Dev, Azure DevOps. Um, rather than having Lance and I to have to have a meeting uh, to discuss work that we've done in the different tools, I can see his work and he can see my work in real time without either one of us having to go through any extra steps. And that's true of any tool that you hook up. Uh, you know, you see a, a list of a dozen or so tools on the, the board here right now. Um, but ConnectAll can support many, many endpoints. And we have two custom connectors as well that we can use to literally connect to any database or any API um, that we have access to, electronic access. And so the whole point is that you can use ConnectAll then to, to coordinate or connect all of your systems in your entire value stream to reduce that time to market overall. It's all done as a, as a standalone service. Connect all is its own application. And uh, what it does then is it talks to all of these uh, tools through their intelligent APIs. 
through published integration points. Um, and we keep track of that information in each place and then coordinate the signaling information across all of the tools. It's most, everything is done with a point and click configuration model. So that's what I'm gonna show you today in the demonstration. Um, and we can run Connect All either on premise if we need to or up in a cloud, either in your cloud or even in Oracy's cloud if you want us to host it for you. Um, and we can talk, of course, then to applications that are on premise or in the cloud, SaaS applications like Salesforce or things like that as well. Um, so it makes no difference where your applications are, where your data is, lives. Connect All can talk to it and it can coordinate across that. One point so I that's like what that, Joe, is Connect it's, all about. it's your end to end value stream from APPM to PM and PPM and, and all tools from ideation all the way through to delivery DevOps and monitoring feedback. Uh, all the tools can be connected uh, in an end to end value stream. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. You know, we can take that idea that somebody has at the beginning of the cycle and carry that information all the way through, uh, informing everybody about changes to it throughout and facilitate collaboration and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so the way this works then is, as I said, it's, it's building a connected tool chain. So for example, you know, you as a customer, you as a DevOps uh, consumer, have some sort of process that you go through today. Um, most of you have it written down in published standards. Sometimes it's more informal guidelines. But the point is, you have a process you go through. And so what we want to do is enable that process. That's why I call it a process enablement tool. We're automating the, the movement of that data from one endpoint to another, whether it's incident data from ServiceNow to Jira or development data from Jira to DevOps. Um, all of this then, once you build that connected tool chain, increases your efficiency, right? The more, the more uh, streamlined that process is, as Lance just said, the more um, efficient that value stream is, then the lower the cost of your development is. Um, it also facilitates collaboration so that everybody knows what everyone else is doing, which ultimately reduces your overall time to market so that you're um, able to deliver new features quickly and more efficiently. And then the other thing that we do that's a little bit insidious, a little bit uh, hidden, if you will, is that because we're facilitating this communication, we actually reduce the cost of the tooling as well. So we're reducing your overhead um, so that you don't have to buy extra licenses of all these tools for every person in the value stream. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Could somebody mute their phone? Okay, so the example I'm gonna show you here in the tool then in just a second is uh, an example of Jira talking to Azure DevOps. So let's assume that you know Lance is the world's best analyst and I know Lance uh, is the world's best analyst. So let's, let's assume for this uh, illustration purpose that his favorite tool is Jira. And so he knows how to use Jira uh, inside and out, loves it, has automation built, has uh, integrity rules built into the workflow, um, and ha has an entire environment set up so that he can build a backlog plan and prioritize the release and sprint structures um, accordingly. But at the same time, I'm the world's best developer, and I happen to like Azure DevOps. So I live in Azure DevOps every day, and I can build code at the blink of an eye. Um, so what we need to do is we need to coordinate between Lance and I. So when Lance has this big idea, um, I don't necessarily know what, what he's done or what he's uh, got in mind, right? So instead, Lance would have to call me and he'd have to uh, tell me what he wants done. Or we'd have to have a meeting to discuss it. Or he could send me an email. Or worst case, he'd have to actually log into Azure DevOps himself and repeat his work in a second environment. Um, either way, any of those methods result in redundant duplicative work. Um, so instead, what we'd rather do is have that big idea automatically show up in my world, in Azure DevOps, and have synchronized changes between them so that when I make a change um, to add additional information or when Lance decides to reprioritize, we both know about each other's work immediately. And that's really what ConnectAll is all about, is synchronizing between those environments. So that's what I'm going to show you here in the tool. 
So let me pop out a PowerPoint, and I'm actually going to bring up an example here. Um, we'll open up Jira first, for example. So Lance, this is your chance. You got some big idea here. I want to create a new use case <laughs> where uh, we're going to build a user story, let's say, in this example. So I'm going to put in Lance's big idea. <laughs> I have big ideas all the time, just nobody listens. That's right, <laughs> exactly. That's because you don't have Connect All to distribute that information. That's right. That's so I'm gonna. Correct. So Lance is gonna say, um, you know, this idea will change the world, right? So that that's Lance's big idea, and he tells me to do something. You know, this is all part of the description of the uh, user story in Jira, and of course it's Lance's idea, so it is of the highest priority. Everybody should immediately work on it. So I'm gonna create that object in in Jira, and now it's in the uh, Jira backlog. So Lance would go through in his prioritization steps and all that kind of stuff. So now Lance, how, what do you normally have to do to get that information to me as a, as a developer? Normally I have to send you an email and then we start to collaborate on it there. So, it, it, and then, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, this is a great idea. What do you think about this? Uh, can we add this to the product and, and so on and forth. And then it turns into this email thread that, has a tendency to get lost and not put into the other systems and prioritize. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's now corporate information that's lost in some, there in some email chain that no one else has access to besides you and me. Um, so instead of you having to do extra work, a second step, what, what I can do is turn on connect all and in the background, connect all will take care of that for me. So for example, I've got a demonstration of, a connection between Jira and Azure DevOps running right now at the user story level. And I created this simply by picking from a list of available tools. And you see the list of all the tools that we can support. I told you that those logos were just a smattering of what's available. And in this case, I went through and created one for Jira, uh, synchronizing in this case to um, Microsoft um, Common Framework. So this is what we use for Azure DevOps. And this connection now, this what we call application link, synchronizes the information between the two tools. This is always running in the background, and our server now is talking to the two applications and polling for changes. They're very small focused queries. We get just the information that's changed, and then we use that to propagate the data as you've told me. So for example, Lance said he wants to bring across that user story definition, the name, the ID, and the priority. Those are the things that are important to him, and those are what I need in order to do my work in Azure DevOps. So this has been running in the background, and if I go look at the Connect All dashboard, for example, you'll see that while I was just describing that to you, Connect All has already noticed that a new record was created, and so it took this Jira um, object, uh, SWI 173, and it created an Azure DevOps object number 29. So it's already done that synchronization for me, which means that if I pop over into Azure and do a refresh here, you're going to see that me as the development user now in Azure sees Lance's big idea automatically. So I don't have to do anything. Lance doesn't have to do anything. Both systems are updated and everyone can see that chain. In addition, then, what I can do is I can look at this. I can click on Lance's big idea. I can look at the details here. I can see that this is an idea that's going to change the world. And I look at the description of what he told me to do. I can even see the JIRA ID here um, of the object that it came from. So I can see the references back to the original um, object in JIRA. And then I can do what I need to with it. For example, I, I can add additional discussion. I can say, Lance, this is a great idea. Um, I'll get to work immediately. And so I can send, send him notes, for example. Um, I could even, because I'm such a quick and smart developer, I can immediately send him a screenshot of the mock-up that I just created. And so I can grab that screenshot, attach it to that big idea, uh, in Azure. And now, again, instead of me having to send this through email and ask for his feedback, I can attach it directly to that user story. And then when I hit the save button, Connect All will sync those changes, my comments, and the changes, the attachment back into um, 
Jira. So if I look at that connect all dashboard, you're going to see that, oh, there it goes. The update has already slid back, and now the changes are back in Jira for Lance to see. This is all done based off of what we call a polling cycle. So our Jira to Azure user story is running on a one minute polling cycle. So any change we make each, uh, on either side of the equation, we each see within 60 seconds. So that's a pretty good latency. That's even better than waiting for the email server to route that information to me through user. <laughs> and so now if I go back into uh, uh, Jira, for example, and do a refresh, we'll actually see that attachment that I created. So here's the attachment I put on the uh, Azure bug. And here's the comment I sent to Lance. I can do literally anything that the tool supports. So we can do comments and custom fields. We can support custom object types. Um, you know, we can do anything that you, need, you do in each of the native tools. I'll also point out, you know, Lance is really big on uh, custom workflow and uh, data validation rules. So Lance, you'll be happy to know that when we do these things, we're respecting the custom workflow on both ends of the equation as well. So any rules you've put into Jira, we will respect when we make those up. <clears throat> so that's really all there is to it. You, you turn on these links, um, and then this just runs in the background. To create the link then, what you'll notice is that um, we have three levels of detail that we have to map. We have a configuration level, which is where we identify the servers that are involved. And so you literally just identify the URL and the credentials to log in. Um, we have an entity level that we have to identify, which is where you tell connect all what object type that you want to you want to link to, as well as the scope of the objects, either by project or by custom filters or both. And so I can identify in this example that stories from the Schultz Widgets project in Jira will flow down to uh, the Visual Studio environment, Azure DevOps, as a user story. And you can see that we can support literally any object in either side of the equation. In this case, I'm flowing from one project to a, another a single project as a named object. But we also have the ability to identify many-to-many -many relationships. And so we have what we call um, an all project indicator. And in this this kind of case, if I would select that, then I would identify data to decide where things need to go. So maybe there's uh, you know, many projects in VSTS that all sync back into JIRA, and I want to use the VSTS project identifier to decide which JIRA project to put things in, as an example. So you can use data to control this, this movement instead of uh, hard coding it. And then finally, the last step is just identifying the field. So once I've picked my objects, I will immediately see a list of all the fields um, in the list. And uh, I can just start clicking them. Uh, so I can say, you know, a field on this side, I want to link to a field over on this side. And I'm just randomly picking a couple of spring fields here <laughs> as an example. And then you identify the direction, whether it's a bi-directional update or a unidirectional update up or down. Um, and then hit the plus sign to add it to the list. And now I just added a custom rule into the sync uh, repository and this will automatically now be synchronized between these two environments. So my JIRA ALM identifier, for example, will be filled in with the activated by field, which makes no sense, but <laughs> is an example of something you could do. You'll notice I've already got a bunch of stuff um, set up. Uh, these are the things that you saw sync a minute ago. So things like title and description and priority and status, these are all bi-directional synchronizations. Whereas things like identifiers, I'm only going to think in one direction or the other. So I'm going to take the ID, for example, out of Visual Studio and push that into Jira. And I'm going to take the key number out of Jira and push that into Visual Studio. And so you can see that I can set these, this signaling information up as well. Now, these can be pretty simple mappings like this, or they can also be more complex. So in the case of something like, let's say, priority, I may need to actually map individual values. And so I can do that with just a click of a button. I can literally say that, you know, highest in JIRA relates to a priority of one in VSTS. 
So the values don't have to be the same on both tools. We can do custom mapping here quite quickly. And they don't even have to be um, an even number of values. They don't have to map cleanly. So in this example, you'll notice I have two Jira values that both link to one um, as your DevOps value. So it can be an uneven mapping and you can put in the custom logic to make that work. We do even have the ability to drop into code if you need to. So if this rule is more complicated than the graphical interface can support. Maybe you have some very complex if then else conditional logic. Then we can also use um, little snippets of code that I can drop into these individual field maps in order to control this through some sort of scripting language like Groovy, Groovy or Ruby or JavaScript or some such. And that's really all there is to it. You set this link up, you identify the servers, the objects, and then the fields. And once you're finished with that, you enable this link and it runs then, as I showed you, um, as a background service that's constantly monitoring the endpoints that you've identified. That's what keeps Lance and I in sync to make sure that I know what he wants me to do and that he knows what I've done so far without either one of us having to leave tools or change our environments or do any extra reporting or email notification manually. Sound good, Lance? You think that's worthwhile? Absolutely, Joe. And you, you walk through that so eloquently. I think that my big idea is going to make it to the to the world really quick. <laughs> well, good, good. So now uh, we've got a few minutes left, so I'll open it up to questions. Um, for all of you, there is a questions panel on the um, webinar interface. You're welcome to submit some questions through there. Uh, there's a spot for you to submit a question and then um, it'll track who asked that question. If we get anything within the next couple of minutes, I'll answer in interactively. Um, if, we, uh, don't, if we get questions that come in after that, we'll send you an email um, after the webinar with the answers to your questions. So feel free to submit questions through that webinar interface. Um, one of the questions that we often get, for example, is uh, about deployment of ConnectAll. And I mentioned that um, ConnectAll can be deployed either locally or uh, in the cloud. So it's very easy to deploy. And as far as licensing goes, the way ConnectAll works is you buy the ConnectAll engine and then you buy the adapters that you care about. So, you know, we have a list of whatever it was, 40-ish adapters. And what you can do then is just buy the two or three or seven that you want to use to build a connected tool chain like I described before. Um, and in that kind of environment, you're just um, growing the ConnectAll product to meet your needs at the time. So you buy as little as you need, and then you can always add on um, from there. Very simple and easy to extend. Hey, Joe, some questions we get uh, often are, what if I have solutions outside of your connectors today? Um, we do also have, that's a, that's a great question, <laughs> and we do also have uh, <clears throat> generic connectors. Um, we can talk to either a database interface or we can talk to an API interface. And so quite literally, we can use those generic connectors to connect to anything that we have an electronic connection to. Now, of course, you know, it's not magic. There is a little bit of work involved in the custom connector. So there's uh, you know, some services work that we have to do to, to customize those, but it's generally on the order of days to do. Um, we're not talking weeks or months. This is a fairly simple um, thing to build. Um, and then we can talk to custom timekeeping systems or things like that. Um, I, I've had many customers, for example, that keep their uh, work time in a separate database. It's usually a proprietary little database they use for time tracking. And then what they want to be able to do is do cost accounting against their project work that's in, say, Jira or DevOps. And we can tie that cost accounting information then to be able to do uh, planning by dollar, for example, um, which isn't even in either of the, two, the application tools. So here's a question. Uh, the question is, what if our issues are in Jira while the code is in VSTS? Can it show the linked branches to the repository? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, and the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, you know, how you build the connections between the tools will completely depend upon your process. So it's very highly customizable. 
But the end result is that you'll have data in the two tools that are linked together. And then we can also link or synchronize those relationships that they might have. So for example, the example I showed you guys a minute ago was a user story in Jira syncing to a user story in Azure DevOps. If that uh, user story in DevOps then was decomposed into code modules related to code modules, related to releases, related to defects or bugs, for example, um, those relationships get, can be synced back to Jira as well. Um, you know, how you, which ones you pick and how you do that will depend upon your individual process, but that's all built in functionality of ConnectFall. The whole idea is that I want Lance to be able to stay in Jira and see everything that I've done, including the relationships and the release cycles and the, the uh, pipeline identifiers and things like that. Well, Joe, thank you so much for your time today and, and taking us through that uh, demo and showing us how to set up and use ConnectAll and helping us understand the challenges today with information everywhere and truly supporting my great idea. Um, this concludes our webinar for today. Uh, happy to hear any feedback from y'all. Um, and uh, if you have any questions further than that, feel free to reach out to us at sales at connectall.com. Uh, and we look forward to hearing more uh, as you take on the challenge of connecting the tools uh, in your uh, software development lifecycle and in your value stream. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Take care.